You may have seen other content creators spreading a message like this, but instead of repeating everything, I'm going to repeat some of it and add my own flourishes. And be even more thorough because thorough is basically what I do. So pull out your calendar and start marking things off because the next three Tuesdays are all extremely important. Today, the release of this video is November 1st. As of today, if you aren't already saving up on leaves, stop doing leaves. This can wait a few more days, but depending on your exact priorities, you may end up needing them. On top of that, today is the day you begin to farm Poetics, if you haven't already. Farm up a full set of gear for Reaper and Sage over the next week, while doing any other preparations you are planning to do. If you have the pre-order Manfina's earrings, like most of you probably do, you need to grind up a little less tomes, but still a lot. And even once you have a full set of gear for Reaper and Sage, gear sets made for them, you need to cap your tomes again, 2,000 out of 2,000, because of buying weapons. There will be tombstone weapons at 70 and 80, each costing 600 Poetics, meaning you need 2,400 Poetics. 400 of those will need to come after spending some on a weapon. You can also trade in any leftover Allegory and Revelation tomes in for Poetics when the patch drops, but at a very low rate. It's worth saving Allegory for an extra 500 Poetics at a 4 to 1 ratio. Revelation? If you can spend it to hit 530 on something, or get a little bit closer, just spend it. Which also, I guess is another point. Any final gearing preparations for your other jobs you want to do, finish them now. You don't need to be perfectly item level 530, but getting close is good if you are already at the point of being close. This is now also the point to stop doing wondrous tales, or at least stop spending second chance points. We'll go into why with the next topic. For things to do during the week, there's the current Mog Tome event. You can get tombstones and Moogle Tombstones for doing the same duties over and over. Just don't do Praetorium too many times, you'll lose your sanity. You can also go and do New Game Plus of the Binding Coils of Bahamut, and even potentially the Omega questline in Stormblood. While basically everything in the story is important for Endwalker up to now, Ishikawa said to do the Coils and Omega if you want two very important things to know going into Endwalker. November 9th marks two weeks from Endwalker's release, and less than two weeks from the real start of the expansion on the 19th. This is the day you want to pick up and complete Wondrous Tales, spend as few second chance points as you can, and then farm back up to nine points. If you somehow don't have Wondrous Tales unlocked, use the time you have to do it now. The quest is just a blue 61 in Idleshire, no effort needed. Second chance points are gained from completing duties with players who have never done a specific duty before. Guild has typically are a good source. Either way, once you have completed the book, do not hand it in. We will hand it in on the 19th, on Reaper or Sage. The goal isn't to get lines, but just to get the 9 seals to complete the book. We want to get that EXP that is worth half a level. That is a lot of EXP for turning in a book, for something we're doing two weeks ahead of time. Spend the rest of your week doing any further final preparations, farming up the points you use for Wondrous Tales, Poetics, or whatever. November 16th is our big day. This is the last day you are playing Shadowbringers. You will likely be able to do some stuff still, but if you want to make the most use out of potential preparations, you become extremely limited in what you can do. Let's explain why. Combined with the Wondrous Tales you prepared last week, and specifically last week because we can use this week's Wondrous Tales after turning in last week's, the challenge log will give us more than an entire level's worth of EXP. We can be level 71 within about 5 to 10 minutes of logging in. Let me lay it all out for you. So at level 70, to get to 71 it takes 12,449,000 EXP. Wondrous Tales is worth exactly half a level, giving 6,224,500 EXP. In our challenge log, there are 7 challenges we want to spend the day preparing. And by that I mean like, 
one hour only. 1,623,900 EXP for doing three roulettes. So we will do two roulettes, any two roulettes for dungeons, and get two out of three. Afterwards, 1,082,600 EXP for doing five dungeons. So in addition to the two roulette dungeons, do any two random dungeons to have four out of five. 1,082,600 EXP for 10 guild hests. So do 9 guild hests. Under the armor is a good choice. It takes like a minute to finish only. 1,082,600 EXP for giving out 5 commendations. Across those 13 duties listed a second ago, give commendations exactly 4 times. No more, no less. After this point, you will do no more duties, or at least no more dungeons or guild hests. Any other duties you do, you are not able to give a commendation. Though most of you probably never give commendations anyway, so it's not much of an issue. When you get into Reaper or Sage, pop into Leveling Roulette and do a guild hest, and give any random person your commendation, and you will get tons of EXP. If you have a pre-made party set up for doing grinding, do a guild test quick without them. Pre-made parties can make use of the limited leveling roulette feature. Click the gear in the top left of the duty finder window and you can switch on limited roulette. The window explains itself pretty well and this makes your leveling roulette much more beneficial. And then we move on to our overworld stuff. 1,623,900 EXP for completing five fates. So do any four random fates in the world. I like Central Shroud, Central Thanalan, Middle Lenosha, and Lower Lenosha. All very easy fate locations that die in like a minute. 1,623,900 EXP for five leaf plates and the same amount of EXP for 20 leaves. This one takes some explaining, so let's, let's go through it. Make sure you have every leave NPC open that you can want, but I'm specifically using Eastern Shroud for this one and doing the Serpent Guild leaves. First, let's talk about leave plates. Every leave when selecting them has a picture at the top of the window. This is the leave plate. Plates signify the type of the leave you are about to do. What we're looking for here is a real wing nut and she's so mean. If these are not there, pick up all of the leaves and do any one random leave, or all of them. Turn these in and then check again. Our goal is to A, get to three out of five leaf plates done, and B, have Wigna and Somin accepted. Do not turn those leaves in at any point if you get them. Keep them. We want to have them, not do them. If you do a lot of leaves without these appearing somehow, just leave the area and come back later and hopefully have different leaves to do. Now it doesn't have to be these either, but they're the easiest to keep track of personally and also very easy to complete when we get to that point. Next, head back into Gridania and do the carpenter leaves for bone harpoons and maple patterns. These items can be bought from the NPCs in the market area and share the same plate. Do these until you have either 19 or 18 leaves completed and 4 out of 5 different leaf plates. Be careful not to accidentally do 5 different plates or 20 leaves total. If you have not done She's So Mean or a real wingna at all like I said you shouldn't and your challenge log looks like this like mine is on screen right now, take 10 seconds to go do them and I really mean 10 seconds. At level 70, you can kill both enemies in one hit, and they spawn in the same place just outside the Hawthorn Hut. Complete these leaves, and then don't turn them in. Leave them, huh, in your quest log until you get onto Reaper or Sage. The moment you get onto the new job, you can come here, turn in She's So Mean and Wigna, and instantly get over 3 mil worth of EXP for free. For proof, my samurai here didn't do the leaves. 
yet still gained 3 mil of EXP upon turning in the leaves. Between this and the Wondrous Tales, your Reaper or Sage can earn about 9.5 million EXP without killing a single enemy. From here, you're going to avoid doing stuff in the overworld related to fates and leaves. Safest bet is to just not play at all at this point and just wait for Endwalker to release, which is what my plan is. Sure, I can do hunts, I can do Bogia, or I can play Shin Megami Tensei 5. But also, speaking of Bogia, after hitting level 71, you can go and grind Bogia and Zadnor to level 80. I feel like a lot of people will be doing this, so it won't be dead or anything. There just might not be any tanks in the instance. This also serves as a way to practice the job at level 80. You can also prepare the gathering logs too, and the crafting logs. We don't know what is replacing the high quality challenges as of recording this, but you can prepare the normal gathering and crafting challenges. When you finally reach one of the new zones, pull out your pick or hatchet and rod, and gather one each. This way you don't need to worry about those logs until reset on Tuesday either. And so, let's run through Endwalker release day as if you're getting Sage or Reaper and trying to get right to level 71 the moment it comes out on November 19th. You log in near the job trainer's intro quest to get the job. Complete the quest, put on your weapon and job stone, and immediately queue for under the armor or any guild hest of your choice. Roulette may also be fastest, but I'm going to be going for under the armor. If you have a tank friend willing to queue with you, even better. While waiting in queue, do the intro quest for Reaper or Sage. Put on your proper gear set and set all that up, do the first job quest, and set up your hotbars. You'll probably need a decent amount of time to set up your bars, so even if you reach the point of the first job quest having a solo duty, you aren't stuck or anything. You're not just waiting for the queue to finish. Plus, we have a few other things we can take care of first. Firstly, teleport to Relga's Reach or Kugane and buy your level 70 tombstone weapon. You now should be a full gear set of I-400. Buy the other job's weapon too. Wondrous Tales gives us tomes and there's the tome trade-in at Mordona to do as well. Now teleport over to Eastern Shroud or whatever other leave meat choice you made and turn in your banked leave. You will immediately gain 3,247,800 EXP plus the tiny leave reward. While here, you can go kill any of the currently spawned fates or the really easy ones in Central Shroud, Central Thanalan, or Middle Lenosha. If you really want, you can go do a Shadowbringer's fate, but those take a while to kill. That's another 1.6 million EXP for a total of 4,871,700 EXP. Then we can head over to Idleshire and turn in our Wondrous Tales for the over 6 million EXP. Be sure to pick up a second book as well, but you can always hold on to it to use on a level 90 job and get full rewards if possible. But otherwise, you can pick the shortest duty on your second book and just use your second chance points to spam retry and get another half a level. If you get Garuda in your book, that's a bonus. Doing a second book instantly brings you to 71 alone. We should be at over 11 million EXP of the 12 million EXP needed without the second book though. If you are still waiting on that queue for guild hests, you can go do pixies for some beast tribe EXP. This can be a very low stakes test of your hotbar setup if you've even fully set it up yet. Whenever you do get into the guild hest, quickly finish it off and give a commendation to any random person, any of them. Just pick whoever at random, the first person you click. The guild hest completion will be a million EXP and the commendation another million EXP. And now finally, if you haven't finished it, do your hot bars, do your intro reaper or sage job quest, and you can do leveling roulette at level 71 and potentially even get whole mr switch as your job especially if you have a full pre-made party and use limited roulette for those two final challenge logs but you're already level 71 and after that roulette you should be almost level 72 dungeon spam your way to 80 or bogia 
or even use trusts for dungeons too. Avoids the queue times entirely. When you're done for the day, you can do the following two things. For one, go into your chat settings and turn off shout chat. People are going to be posting spoilers there almost guaranteed. Secondly, get rid of all of your belts. Belts are going away for Endwalker, so you might as well just give them to your grand company already. If you have the speed belt though, keep that one. You'll be able to trade that in for a ring later down the line. And so now in your journey to get to 80 to continue the main story quest and finally experience Endwalker on your new job, you're already way ahead of the curve. Let me end this with a bit of a warning though. Even if you don't get whole Mr. Switch, even if you don't use limited leveling, you could get something like Bardem's Medal on Sage. I highly doubt the stat crunch is going to make this dungeon any easier than it was before. So if you're going in as a sage and are very uncomfortable with their toolkit, don't understand it, or something like that, it could be a very rough run to complete. And this still also applies to Reaper to an extent, just not as much. Don't use leveling roulette immediately if you aren't prepared for it. These jobs are exciting. Many of us want to do the main story as these new jobs. But you can't neglect your learning either. This video is basically an outline of my step-by-step -step plan for the moment servers come online, but I'm quicker to understand mechanics and rotations than others might be, and I'll still be slower than other people as well. But this channel exists thanks to the support of all of you, the support the 1 to 80 leveling skills guides got. I'm here only because of you all, and you all showing that not everyone is some god-tier player who can just look at a tooltip and just get it. Some people need better explanations. So for all the excitement, for all the wonderfulness that these new jobs seem to bring, keep going at your own pace as needed. This guide gives you prep for the new jobs to quickly speed in leveling right to 71 or even 72, but doesn't give you any learning of how these jobs play. Spend time watching media tour content from the creators who were involved. Read the official tooltips in the patch notes or official job guide pages if those are put up sooner than later. Theory crafters may even have perfect openers made already. Though based on incomplete information because media tour potencies weren't final. Worst case scenario, start with like Dusk Vigil back in Heaven's Ward. Level 50 toolkit, still a bunch of abilities, but not bare minimum something like Sestasha would give. As for me, what are you crazy? I'm getting right to level 80. Let's go! Thank you for watching this notice on how to prep for Endwalker and Sage or Reaper. You can do as little or as much of this as you like, but I at least recommend doing the Tomestone suggestion if you have zero plan to do Bogia. You need gear to do Shadowbringers dungeoning and you need gear to get into Endwalker content as well. And throwing Poetics at the vendors will get you right to the gear you need to be. We don't know what the expansion is all going to bring in actual content, but man, I am so excited for it. Along with the rest of you, I am sure. If you have any suggestions for final preparations on the way to Endwalker, feel free to leave them down below in the comments. Take care and may the power of Anna Nidhogg slay waste to your enemies. And an extra thanks to all my patrons over on Patreon. And an extra, extra special thanks to... Ayman Al-Khatib, Benny Begurn, Benjamin Hahn, Crikey mate, Ethan, Ethan Olsen, James, Jericho, Kevin Lowe, Kyle Steinhauser, Mizella, Scott Stanley, T-Rogue, Ticklefinger, and Valet LLC. Thank you all for watching, and have a good day, and it's almost time for Endwalker.